Welcome to CAM Radio, an ahead of the curve initiative by Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas, bringing you every Friday the latest in legal and policy. Stay tuned, enjoy listening. Welcome to Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas, CAM Radio, clear cut clarity with class. This podcast minimizes the mayhem and crafts clarity with care and class befitting the name clear cut when jurisprudence meets the demands of a global market what does it take to be a talented leader leadership may not just require legal acumen but also some finesse to navigate managing people and getting the best out of them and it just may be that people in the legal field might not prioritize leadership as much as refining their legal skills so What does it take for a top tier full service law firm like Swill Amarchand Mangaldas to stand at the forefront of investing in talent and people in a post pandemic world how would cam think ahead of the curve and establish new industry standards how can lawyers assertively walk down the corridors of justice and be more than ready for whatever has audacity to face them to break it all down i would like to welcome preeti bose leading talent and leadership at mm-hmm. cam preeti my opening question to you i mean where do you see leadership in the legal field taking on a new form and really from your perspective what does leadership and talent look like in today's legal landscape thanks shija uh, i'm really delighted to be on this conversation today and you know from your question you see leadership is universal so in irrespective of industry or geography a great leader can always be a catalyst in change the internal and external lens of a company and you know when you when you look at a rapidly evolving legal market of 2023 moving on to 24 now almost uh, legal professionals whether they are aspiring or you know established anybody you know we have to go beyond academic laurels and technical prowess and you know when we were doing a research on what leading law firms are doing globally in terms of talent and leadership development and this is i'm talking about way back in 2021 before i joined uh, we found some examples of firms investing in leadership uh, leadership skills of few chosen ones mm-hmm. uh, mostly they looked at technical skills of a lawyer you know and i have seen some learning calendars but it was more technical skills and good lawyering skills Uh, I did not come across any example way back in 2021 where a firm had taken the bold step of envisioning an absolutely in-house, uh, you know, leadership and talent development tech academy, and hiring someone from the industry to set it up and run it. And to your question about you know leadership in the legal landscape, Shreya, I think uh, given today's climate around work cultures and aspirations of the younger generation, I think it's incredibly important to invest in lawyers being aspirational leaders. who can not only galvanize the team members to be technically sound and stay focused on client needs and relationships but at the same time be present as a human first and leader second how would you define an ideal leader in the legal space oh you know when you open up google and we type leadership there are thousands and thousands millions of uh, definitions mm-hmm. that jump at us you know mm-hmm. but i always felt for uh, you know uh, shija that leadership for me is a uh, it's a huge uh, privilege and a responsibility right mm. a lot of people might think it is privilege and you know you're delegating work you're at a senior level uh, you know and it comes with of course its own trappings but for me i think it's an immense privilege and a responsibility because you're not only getting work done through yourself but through others and often enough for uh, you know people are looking at you and observing you and taking cues about their own personal and professional lives you don't even have to say anything right right so, like you said it comes with its own trapping so basically it's not all easy there are challenges cut out for you also so in the current realm of legal practice how focused are lawyers on talent and leadership taking it further from what exactly were you saying and how do you see these two qualities converging to sort of shape the future of camp for instance interesting question shri and i must take you back to the time uh, before i had joined camp and i worked in global organizations you know with the bandwidth uh is huge and you know the in terms of organization size and business size is slightly different right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when i was thinking about cam i'm like okay we are 1000 people yes we full services law firm what am i going to do because i come from the industry what will i do i have i don't know the law uh, the legal industry i don't have a lawyer friend yet 
I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And it really took a few conversations to completely understand uh, how does the legal industry work? How are lawyers conditioned? How do they function? What is their job? Yeah. Mm. Coming back to your question, Shija, you know, a strategy for leadership and talent development is to build current capability to ensure that people are able to do their jobs well today, but also prepare for capacity and talent pipeline for tomorrow. Uh, I do see some lawyers who do appreciate the need of this hour, that is to focus on the right talent and leaders who will help us achieve our winning aspiration. There's a lot of support internally from senior partners and of course the management uh, to help build for tomorrow. The most important thing that I see, you know, in how lawyers think for talent and leadership is that people have understood the technical skills and, you know, the savviness of being a a really fantastic lawyer will only take us that far. There are so many softer sides of being a great lawyer, right? That comes from either classroom trainings or, you know, learning and listening to others or actually just, you know, doing the job well, but taking constant feedback that mm-hmm. people are very open about. And all of these put together, you know, and brings me to this concept of the 70-20-10 and 70% is, uh, you know, just doing the jobs and learning everyday new skills, uh, 20% is more about learning from others and only 10% of our new skills and, uh, you know, capability builds in uh, classroom sessions or like a structured program. So when we look at this entire 70, 20, 10, you realize that there's a lot of focus that goes on how lawyers and senior lawyers, especially build the kind of climate within the teams. Mm-hmm. So it's basically more about being a more people's person, you're saying. Uh, because the depiction of lawyers in the popular culture really has been of those extremely articulate people, but really can also be borderline, or perhaps a lot of them could also be extremely arrogant. And perhaps the culture of the organization or the people below would not really seem so well. Do you think some of those popular culture kind of depictions that we have are not necessarily correct, especially for law firms? You know, and these are the, you're absolutely bang on, Shrita, and these are the kind of conscious and unconscious biases uh, one, you know, has about certain professions, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're a lawyer, cynicism and arrogance uh, comes with it, right? It's part of the parcel. But, you know, I've seen this across all industries, Shrita, so it's not something that only the lawyers uh, demonstrate, yeah? Of course, it's a very, very human trait. So while I see some uh, cynical, arrogant uh, human beings and some lawyers, I also see some absolutely grounded, focused on the right things. Right. Yeah. So I, I would put more as a human trait rather than, you know, as a lawyer trait. So. <laughs> okay, that's a do well put. Tell me one thing, Preeti, when you are an all service firm like CAM, you know, and you are doing this leadership program, it might just present unique challenges. In my profession, all this while that I've been a business journalist, I have found lawyers to be the smartest people, incredibly smart and the most articulate people in the room. Some of them are really are extremely articulate. So when you are dealing with a, such a smart and astute mind, I want to understand from you, what are the kind of creases that CAM might have to iron in this journey? And do you really think that lawyers who have so much on their plate are very willingly and with open arms embracing CAM leadership program? I know I'm asking you some tough questions here, but perhaps it's about time to sort of really address the elephant in the room. You're touching some raw nerve here, Shita. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I think uh, in an industry where uh, a leadership development, whether it is a leadership development academy or consistent focus, it's not been historically part of the industry, right? And it's not just CAM. When you look at across the legal industry, you'll find it consistent, Yeah. Because anywhere else, right, people have had organization built or external programs, you know, leadership skills are part of their universities, etc. Unfortunately, uh, legal industry has remained untouched by it for a very, very long time. So yes, there are challenges. uh, But overall, when I look at the last two and a half years journey of setting up leadership academy, doing multiple programs, you know, being a coach to some of the senior partners and new partners, I do realize that the response towards uh, the programs has been very, very positive, Shita. Wow. Uh, they are, you know, people are appreciative. And, you know, before we, uh, you know, do the program, there's a pre-work, pre-read that goes into, you know, get more uh, engagement, interest. There's a feedback session that's collected after the session is over to gauge 
the training impact and the overall impact and effectiveness. And we share the feedback with the entire population. Even if I do a program for, say, a small segment of partners, you know, I share it with the entire partner populace, knowing that there's always, always the challenge. And I'll come to the challenges that you spoke about, you know, that uh, one is that there are different practice areas being a full services law firm. So even if we do a program, you will not have time enough, right, to address challenges of each practice area because you can't get all lawyers in a room for a full day session. It's been extremely challenging, right? And that's been our reality from the very beginning. So we crunch the session time. You know, most of the sessions are 60 to 90 minutes max to us. And even that uh, feedback is that they're too long. And I completely get it, Shreja, right? Because there are client calls, there are exigencies, there are last minute challenges, changes. So that is always our reality. We try and make the most of these uh, constraints, right? If it is an internal program, Shreja will repeat some of these sessions, right? But it's not always possible. Uh, what we do is, you know, cast the net absolutely wide and get a mix of classroom, online, webinar, post-read, pre-read, feedback, uh, you know, creating some more engagement. That is that. But, uh, you know, but just coming back to the most important challenges, uh, does everybody think it is an important, it is important for them to come be a part of these sessions, right? Something that you spoke about uh, some time back is, the arrogance of it, and I know it all, right? So some people might assume or might think that I absolutely don't need any development, I'm great as is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that also happens, right? And uh, we leave it at that. There's no point pushing uh, somebody to get into a training room because I always feel that learning needs to be a pull factor, Shija, not a push factor all the time. When people are growing up in their career ladders, uh, some bit of push might help, right? Because people don't know better. But as they grow senior, uh, the feeling that a leader needs to constantly be learning because if they stop learning, uh, how will they continue to teach and coach their own team members? That's so, well put, Preeti. In fact, even I have observed this, that I think when you are growing up in your career till the time you reach that mid-level to senior level, it could be your technical skills. But as you evolve into your role, into your careers, ahead of that, it will only be leadership, people management, building teams, your relationship with the top people, external stakeholders, that will take you very far. And the point that you mentioned that if there are some people who think that technically they are all sound and they don't necessarily need the leadership program, perhaps that is the answer. They just quite need it then and there. And uh, one understand that it is actually more than lip service than it's extensive program work, like you mentioned, that it's pre-read, post-read, webinar, so you also get ex external guests, external speakers. So it's basically an effort and a concerted effort, one of its kind with the firm, with the ultimate ambition, can one say, being that you need to produce good lawyers in the country who are leadership sound also, technically sound also. Is that the ultimate ambition? Are we saying that? Uh, you know, uh, Shita, to each form, a uh, different need would be there. But what we are gunning towards is uh, definitely uh, looking at a breed of lawyers who are not just technically fantastic and out of the way. Okay. But they're also inspirational leaders. And what you refer to sometime back about technically sound at the early years of their career. And as they grow, they need to be better at teamwork, uh, collaboration, looking at the firm strategy. It is a framework that we have leveraged for multiple years. Now it's called a T-shaped capability building. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it just means that as you're growing in your career, the vertical part of the T is your uh, functional skills, the technical skills, you know, the job that we need to be absolutely great at. The lateral part of the T, the top of the T is actually your leadership skills, you know, your ability to be strategic, look at the big picture, paint an inspiration and a vision for your team members and your organizations, or be fantastic listeners. Anything that keeps people together because it's all about the people and the, you know, the organization at a senior level there. That's sort of well put, Preeti. I want to sort of also understand from you that the female leadership at CAM was something which really struck me. And I must tell you, I have had the opportunity of interacting with few of them. And I found them extremely smart, astute, sound, and really giving it back in terms of our conversations or webinars, not only now, but it's been for a while. Can you tell me a little more about some of the peculiar challenges which perhaps female leaders could feel? Uh, the legal industry, is it as male-dominated as, say, a 
counterpart financial services industry which is almost 80% males how does the male female dynamics really play out in the legal industry which is actually with a centerpiece the epicenter is knowledge really you know we are a knowledge industry you know shija and a uh, uh, few years ago in fact decades ago some of the industries were not considered uh, so called female friendly or women friendly yeah uh tech was one it was another one right of course law was another one and i've seen um, some of the senior leaders the women leaders that i meet right i've seen the struggle and the way it has shaped their personalities and how they engage with others right while they had to put in a uh, 100 plus extra percentage of effort into being uh, really fantastic at what they do and you know better than the male counterparts because you know being heard being seen was itself a challenge right absolutely i still hear some of the you know senior lawyers women lawyers say that if i have gone with two associates right sometimes a client would look at the associate who's a male and address them rather than look at me and answer even though i am the leading partner on the matter wow yeah. that also happens there are challenges so uh, you know about how do they engage with the client what kind of relationship the professional relationship they build how far they can be assertive but not be aggressive how can and i know somebody told me that how they make other or the client feel better right because it goes without saying that uh, some people can be really touchy and some people also have massive egos about being a certain gender yeah yeah okay. so yeah irrespective of being in a law firm or not i think these dynamics are very social dynamics right they play out outside of the society as well in our families in our friend circles right and you know we are just a sample size uh, in within an organization we are essentially who we are whether in the firm or outside the firm so some of these biases against or for a gender are very very real so these biases exist very much in the legal industry also so what is the kind of uh... advice or what is the kind of special programming would you have for female partners or leaders do you have any which is sort of really targeted at the female partnership so we just been a uh, very interesting question shija and we've just been thinking about it uh, you know having a mentoring program uh, too premature to talk about in detail but something that is dedicated to uh, you know women uh, you know across the firm and help them address whether they are at a certain life stage whether they having any challenges or uh, anything right that we just keeping the scope very very open but just want to give them that air that's one but at the same time i very very strongly feel shija that we can't be just doing programs for women whether mm-hmm. in law firm or outside i think it's the entire society right so any such program that you're doing you need to have men and women both in the room right Yeah, it has to be as inclusive as possible. Definitely, then only the change would happen. It's same thing that we go outside in the society as well, right? How do you treat women, right? You have to also teach the sons to uh, be kind to themselves and to the sisters and the mothers and the daughters and everybody, right? It's just I always feel our social conditioning determines how we also show up at work. Absolutely. Yeah, I also have to ask you this. I know that we have some little time left at the sort of as we get gearing towards the end of this conversation. But this entire narrative about artificial intelligence, which really is questioning the relevance of people, and not only people who are doing menial jobs, but some of the smartest minds also out there. It's come after content creators. It's come after writers. It's come after journalists. It's also come after lawyers. And you are in this unique. positioning of managing leadership and development and you spoke about this entire t faced leadership program that you run across industries so at a time where technical skills are kind of being i would say not entirely replaced quote and quote but being complemented by technology service out there i mean do you really think that's all the more important for lawyers to really really focus on some of the emotional skills soft skills leadership skills and perhaps really emerge as a leader of the future do you think or or, or is the mind share really going on come on i mean i really need to first take care of my 70% technical skills how do i ensure i am better than the technology out there related question to shija and very very timely as well you know i feel every few years there is comes a technology or some Uh, a social uh, construct you know that completely topples us okay uh, so i feel ai is something that is here to stay there are jobs of course that are going away 
but it doesn't mean that all jobs are going away because you would have also seen there are multiple new jobs that they have come up. I wouldn't have imagined 20 years ago that being a TikToker influencer is also a career option. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So multiple jobs are coming up that are completely based on creativity. And I remember reading this World Economic Forum, you know, list of skill sets for 23, 24. And it said, you know, some of the skills that are going to be in eminence in 23, 24 are, uh, you know, creative problem solving, growth mindset, critical thinking, leading with social and emotional intelligence, uh, dealing with difficult people, etc. That is not something that probably a machine can do. Mm. That is inherently a very human challenge and a problem and something that as humans we need to solve for, right? I mean, I, we've had uh, instances where somebody had proposed uh, coaching through machines, right? There's, an, there's a bot, uh, right? And you in, feed in your challenge and the bot will throw some examples and, uh, you know, solutions for how you can be better. And I just sat there. I'm like, I don't know how people put up business proposals like that. <laughs> what are you saying well that's very interesting tell me a little more about i it. love the creativity Shija. i love the fact that somebody could think of uh, something like that but i'm thinking coaching inherently is all about connecting with the human side the person the challenges the empathy that you show towards other person and but again coming back to your question so there will be opportunities where people can do fantastically well mm -hmm. in topics in areas that are far more predominantly human driven right examples that I shared about the skills that are going to be critical in 23, 24 and, you know, in 27. Uh, that was a projection next three, four years. But I think nothing takes away from a lot of jobs that we are great at. At the same time, we cannot, cannot, uh, you know, just turn a blind eye to the technology, the advancement and the AI, right? We have to be cognizant and see how do we integrate it so that it doesn't overpower us and we feel helpless. But how can we very smartly and be strategic about uh, you know, doing jobs or integrating it with our own lives, that it takes away the mundane and what drives people energy down. And so that if people can focus on something that is far more creative and what they want to get energy from. That's it all well put. We spoke about quite a few things, Preeti. We spoke about what does it mean to be a lawyer and what really are the skills required as we sort of build India's future 2027, the entire competition with new kind of technologies coming in, the kind of culture which law firms have to build? What does it really mean to have a leadership academy, one of its kind? And this entire talk about the female leadership. My last question to you really is that if you were to look ahead and do some crystal ball gazing here, five years down the line, how do you see CAM lawyers who have gone through this program being different from their peers and competitors? What really will be one outlying characteristic which will sort of really keep them apart from the peers and competition? What would that be? You know, this sounds like a question from Mr. Shock, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, I should I definitely <laughs> ask him this also. <laughs> yeah. No, interesting. And, you know, what we've been doing, Shrija, for the last two and a half, three years is gradually and strategically building talent for tomorrow. And we hope that uh, the participants of uh, various leadership programs and people who are getting exposed to a uh, new culture, new ways of thinking, will walk away with at least one change, one tiny change, one shift that they wish to bring out in themselves. Mm. I just want to say that we are in for the long game. We're playing the long game, Shrija. And any change, especially in the space of mindset or behaviors, will take some time to seed. You know, when people go through any learning intervention, they need to first understand and accept and adapt something that is personally relevant to them and then implement it and then practice it enough for the new skill or behavior to become unconscious competence. All of these things, you know, need the right mix of support environment, individual effort, support from the partners, and so on, right? Uh, but I just want to end by saying that we are really committed to staying invested in the leadership and talent development across all levels. We have uh, flagship programs, uh, you know, coming up at different uh, you know, strategic milestones at career stage. So we're trying to ensure that we stay ahead of the competition and be industry pioneers because that's our motto, right? Being ahead of the curve. <laughs> Thanks for this, Preeti. This conversation shows that there is definitely a paradigm shift to set an industry standard that challenges the status quo and reshapes the narrative of what it means to be a legal professional in the 21st century. And so Cam Radio thanks you. Till the time we see you again, goodbye and good luck. And thank you for listening to us.